Let's do some news! My name is Mike B.A.K. Phony. Notifications not turned off. I'll turn those off in just a second. Uh, <laughs> today is October 18th, 2019. The time is 2.53 p.m. Pacific. And I'm gonna nuke chat real quick while I log in here and turn off these notifications. Meanwhile, as I'm nuking chat, uh, I will also ask, do you guys want to start with, boop, there it goes, uh, the good news or the bad news? Because we have a mix today. I'm not trying to push all bad news all the time, but we have some. So do you guys want bad news first, good news first? Bad, bad, bad. I'm not gonna flip a coin. I'm asking you guys. You guys flip the coins. Bad. Okay, it's overwhelmingly bad. Over. Finish with good news. Oh yeah, that's a good, good way of putting it right there. Bad. Okay. Bad. Oh, oh man. Fine. Fine. We could do that. Bad. Bad news. Adam Silver, the uh, NBA commissioner, uh, made a statement earlier this uh, yesterday, actually, uh, saying we were being asked to fire. Uh, Daryl Morey, the manager of the Houston Rockets, I believe, uh, by the Chinese government. We said, there's no chance that's happening. There's no chance we'll even discipline him. Why are we talking about this? Because this sets the stage for the rest of the news that we're we'll talking about. And also is a great follow-up on last week's episode where we talked a whole lot about, about, uh, uh, the Chinese government and Blizzard. Adam Silver has absolutely nothing to gain by making this comment. He actually has more to lose by making this comment. So I'm going to go ahead and say that what he's saying is the truth. He was indeed asked to fire Daryl Morey uh, over the tweet supporting uh, Hong Kong uh, that that threw the entire NBA into a huge fucking shitstorm. Uh, and he's now following up saying they actually asked me to fire him and we're not going to do it. So, yes, good. Good. But now we know for certain. As if anybody had any doubts that the Chinese government is indeed uh, actually making demands of people by flexing its economic muscle. Uh, and Blizzard last week, Jalen Breck or somebody, wrote an open letter saying that Chinese, Ch China had no influence on their decision. My interpretation uh, of, this, of the entire Blizzard thing was that Blizzard made the decision on their own because they're afraid of what they could lose because the NBA was going through all this and losing all of their deals and everything with, uh, with, with, with the Chinese government, the Chinese people. Uh, and so Blizzard didn't want to, uh, uh, to also uh, have the same thing happen to them. So, go Catalonia. Who's uh, LeBron? Yeah, then LeBron. Yeah, Le Lamau James. Uh, yeah, he, he came out, he came out earlier before this and said, and I know all this is like American, you know, uh, American sports, NBA, uh, it's not really that interest uh, of interest to a lot of folks. And I understand that, but it's still pretty fascinating to see like how things are playing out with the NBA in relation to, uh, the Chinese, Chinese government and censorship and everything, because all that stuff is also happening in the games industry. And we see a lot of parallels there. And so that's why we're talking about this to open going back to blizzard. There was a letter that was sent. This is from Congress. This is from a few members of Congress. Uh, sent a letter to to uh, Robert Kotick, chief CEO of Blizzard, right? Or Activision Blizzard. This is the boss, right? Uh, and th in this letter, they discuss how they're basically they're worried that Blizzard's decision to uphold a ban for uh, Blitzchung, uh, uh, the gentleman. If you somehow, if you somehow sleep on a rock, this is the gentleman who uh, expressed his support of Hong Kong during a. Uh, uh, during a post-game interview when he won the championships in, uh, in Taiwan, uh, it was like two Sundays ago, uh, Blizzard banned them initially for one year, banned him, well, the three of them, uh, for one year, and then he, they recently, uh, and then the past week they, uh, they actually reduced that sentence down to six months, and that happened last Friday, and, uh, and now Congress is keeping, keeping the topics, uh, the topic of Chinese censorship uh, in the headlines, by sending this letter, getting headlines everywhere. 
And in it, they say Activision Blizzard benefits from China's growing market for esports, along with an investment from Tencent, one of China's largest technology firms, which they have a 5% stake in, by the way. Uh, as you uh, in Blizzard, uh, as you and your company are no doubt aware, the Chinese government uses the size and strength of its economy to suppress opinions uh, with which it disagrees. Last week alone, they talk about the Chinese uh, 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 Apple basically removing the uh, uh, the app that uh, Hong Kong protesters were using to find the locations of uh, uh, of, uh, of police forces on the on the uh, on the ground. Uh, then South Park uses LeBron quote in the new episode too. Oh man, I love that South Park is just relentless. They're just not gonna let it go, which is great. Um, uh, he's trying to. He's he is saying it to try to make it seem like China has no effects on on his decision and try to appease people mad at the NBA. Um, so just continuing on this list here, it says uh, your company claims to stand by one's right to express individual thoughts and opinions. Yet many of your own employees believe that Activision Blizzard's decision to punish Mr. Chung runs counter to those values. Because your company is such a pillar of the gaming industry, your dis your disappointing decision could have a chilling effect on gamers who seek to use their platform to promote human rights and basic freedoms. This was, I mean, in, in my opinion, this was uh, uh, represented in how they would not say Hong Kong attitude um, immediately following this whole fiasco, right? Like casters were actually stumbling over it and then like not saying it. And I guess later it was revealed that there was some kind of miscommunication, miscommunication or something where we didn't tell them not to say Hong Kong, but apparently it was interpreted as such, but we didn't tell them that. Um, what the fuck? Anyways, <laughs> uh, so as China as China amplifies its campaign of intimidation, you and your company must decide whether to look beyond the bottom line and promote American values like freedom of speech and thought, or to give in to Beijing's demands in order to preserve market access. We urge you, in the strongest terms, to reconsider your decision with respect to Mr. Chung. You have the opportunity to reverse course. We urge you to take it. The uh, uh, the this, this, this signees here are uh, Ron Wyden, Marco Rubio. Uh, AOC, uh, Mike Gallagher, Tom Malinowski, and if you are familiar with any of these, any of these guys, you know this is a pretty, pretty broad uh, range. This is very much a bipartisan uh, <laughs> collection of signatures here. It's like a tripartisan collection of signatures on this on this letter from Congress. Uh, and I'm sure they probably could have got more too if they if they walked it around a little bit more and started fishing for more stuff. Um, Gallagher's ex president of the ESA. Uh, never heard of any of them. <laughs> Zelda, if you haven't heard of 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 uh, 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 Alex Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, I have to read it every time because I always fuck up the middle part. Uh, then I'm I'm a little surprised. I'm actually a little surprised at that. But 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 it's it's understandable. Uh, it's no 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 judgment. European. I know I know. I just I just felt like you know some of these people have broader reach than they actually do. Um, you know you have to when when all three parties are pissed off. Yeah, when everybody's pissed off. Yes, exactly. Um. Yeah, Marco Rubio and AOC on the same bill. Cats and dogs living together. Madness. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah, this letter was sent today uh, to uh, uh, Bobby Kotick. This is, this is really looking bad for Blizzard with BlitzCon coming up in 13 days. Like, this is really, really not looking good. Um, and then, and then, there's even more... Did I say BlitzCon? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I probably did not, but it's possible. I probably did. Uh, so here it says, uh, Blizzard canceled the Overwatch event in New York City. And this happened earlier this week. They had, a, they had an actual launch event, a lost, lost, launch event for, uh, uh, for Overwatch releasing on the Switch. There's a lot, of, a lot of misinformation surrounding this, and I'm sure somebody in chat might like mention one or two of these things, but I just want to go ahead and point out that the refund thing was um at the at, at the beginning it definitely looked like Nintendo was like legit pissed that uh that Overwatch that Blizzard was uh, postponing the whole event uh or canceling the the event um out of fear they say out of fear of protests uh which I, I mean it's a pro it's a protest I don't know maybe if they're afraid of protests I get it like they're not gonna have a launch thing but it still doesn't look good um but yeah the uh, there is there's rumors uh, flying around that. Uh, uh, that for the first time ever, Nintendo was allowing refunds. But the reality is that Nintendo does allow refunds. Uh, I think you get like one one refund or something uh, over X amount of time or something. But the bottom line is that it is not unique to Blizzard. It just so happens that because of this, a lot of people are canceling their 
Overwatch uh, uh, pre-order and they're being allowed to do so, whereas previously we didn't have such an, I guess you say, an outflux of people uh, exiting the, uh, uh, you know, their Overwatch um, uh, pre-orders. Uh, BlizzCon's gonna be super duper, it's gonna be fucking crazy. Um, <laughs> Laura being watched it for the year out. The QA, yeah, so, so it doesn't stop here, unfortunately. It does not stop here. Uh, Blizzard just, just yesterday also canceled and or well postponed uh, where'd your ads go well they suck so uh blizzard also postponed an event in taiwan and hong kong or sorry uh, sorry taiwan uh, uh i said amid hong kong protests uh so they had a wild tournament that's supposed to be happening there yesterday and they canceled that as well so they're 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 definitely uh, like they're absolutely feeling the heat and with only a couple of weeks left for BlizzCon, I am certain that they're trying to figure out some way to not allow the not allow any more headlines to be generated because of their uh, because of their actions. Already, everything that they're doing is 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 leading to a negative uh, headline because of their current status. Uh, I mean, just earlier this week as well, just a couple days ago. Uh, they actually banned those high, those uh, high school those uh, um, Hearthstone players, the university guys who held up the sign. Uh, if, if you need a refresher, I got the link here. Um, you can see here, here in the lower left corner, you can see right there. Boom! It says free. It says uh, it says free. Oh, boop! There we go. Free uh, free Hong Kong boycott Blizz or free boycott Hong Kong Blizz. However you want to read it. Uh, and you know these guys, they held this up. This was like a week and a half ago or so, and they did this to stand in solidarity with Blitz Chung and his actions. And they wanted to also see if Blizzard was going to uh, take the same actions against them. They did not initially, and so because of that, uh, these guys uh, uh, said, "Well, they're not going to attend the next." They, they actually expected to be banned, and they're like, "Well, if they're not going to ban us, then we're just, we're just not we're going to quit. We're not going to attend the next uh, championship." Um, Blizzard said, "No, you can't quit." You're fired. <laughs> and a week later, uh, they follow up saying that they are going to give them the same ban of six months. Uh, and so, no, no change for these guys. Uh, I will say that Blizzard had no win. They either could have left it alone, which honestly would have looked massively hypocritical. Uh, but at the same time, it would have not. It would not have generated another headline. Uh, or they could have banned him to stay in line with the, the initial punishment that they gave to Blitzchung, um, and just, just basically eat up another few headlines that are just not good. Uh, I will say that the fact that they put Boycott Blizz really, really kind of undermined their, um, uh, their message, or their, their attempt at basically sciencing this whole thing, because that's really what they were doing, right? They, they got together, they're like, hey, let's make this sign, we'll hold it up. And uh, it'll be funny, and we'll see what they do. Uh, if, if, I feel like if they just wrote "Free Hong Kong," then I would like to see what Blizzard would do about it, because you know, free speech, and whatnot. Guys are in the states. Uh, yeah, I, I, but unfortunately, they wrote "Boycott Blizz," so we'll never know. Maybe in an alternate timeline, someone was like, "Hold on a second, boy. Maybe we shouldn't do that." Because if you write "Boycott Blizz" on a sign and you hold it up at a fucking Blizzard, Blizzard sponsored event, they're probably gonna get banned. <laughs> like that's that's just a fucking given. Um, although it was late in the punishment, it was good, and they did it, and it was closer to the adjustment. Yeah, it was closer to what they gave to, uh, to Blitzchung. And I want to also note, again, if you didn't watch last week's episode, this is not in line with how they, uh, with what their actual, um, uh, punishment standards are in their player guide. Uh, we went over it extensively last week. Uh, in their player guide, they go, I think it was, what, like, warning, um, like forfeit like match i don't remember the actual steps uh actually hold on a second. let me see if i can find it here let me see warning 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 i don't have it here either uh but basically they have essentially four chances or three chances and on the fourth strike they're out uh and this is two cases now with blitz chung and also these uh uni guys where it was the first it was the first infraction and they have uh, uh they might as well just rewrite the fucking thing uh, it was a warning, match, tournament, and disqualification. Yeah, probably something like that. Um, yeah, they just, they, they, they're not abiding by their own rules. So I expect to see an update to the rule book stating that any kind of political, uh, you know, political protests or anything that, uh, that, you know, enters the game space is, uh, is dealt with in line with how they have been dealing with it. 
Um, but I don't know if that'll actually happen. Uh, they just uh, gave Blizz an out. Now Blizz gets to say, see, yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. So, uh, even a bunch of Westerners boycott, there are more than that number of potential customers of China, so they may be willing to just take the net win. Yes, that is, that is basically what is happening. They are more than happy to, uh, I mean, if you look at the, look at the market share. Like, Blizzard is only taking in, uh, what was it, like, like a, a, a 12% or something? Like, it wasn't a huge percentage of, of actual revenue they're pulling in from, uh, from a, the Asian markets. Uh, <clears throat> but the potential was there for them to get more. Diablo Immortal has not been released yet, right? That's going to be huge. And they see that as an opportunity to make a shitload of money overseas. They know, they know that the U.S. market's not even going to, not even going to, uh, uh, oh shit. Uh, they know that the U.S. market is not going to, um, uh, to play Diablo Immortal. <laughs> like, sure, some of you guys might, but for the most part, it's not like you the demographic here that's going to play versus the demographic in China is going to be, I mean, it's going to be completely lopsided. Uh, so Blizzard is, is definitely going to make whatever decision is going to support their bottom line. And if that's going to hurt them in terms of like their community, then I, th I feel like they're willing to take that hit if they think that, you know, gamers forget, you know, maybe game gamers will just forget. And here next year, or when we announce a bunch of things at BlizzCon, uh, then, uh, don't forget all about it. And you know what? That might be a thing for a lot of folks. Uh, I already put a time limit on my, you know, my boycotting of Blizzard stuff, which is uh, six months, basically how, how long they banned uh, Blitzchunk for. Um, that's, 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 where I'm, that's where I stand on this whole thing. Um, but in terms of, uh, but, you know, but some folks, you know, they, they will catch a, a whiff of the announcements coming out of BlizzCon and they're going to want to jump right into it. You know, fuck you know, the, uh, the protest, <laughs> uh, it was slash to bring it up, but they mentioned that they were going to keep the focus on the games as top priority and no political things. They're attorneys, which means, uh, does that mean the pride day at overwatch league is no longer be a thing? Yes. So that, that's the big, that's the big hypocrisy when it comes to blizzard is that, uh, you know, supporting, supporting the rights of individuals who are marginalized because of their gender or because of their sexual preference or because of anything like that costs them basically nothing. In fact, it probably ends up gaining them money. Uh, but when it comes to defending the, the, uh, and standing up for human rights in, you know, like Hong Kong, for example, uh, that will actually cost them money. And it, so there, that, therein lies the actual hypocrisy of Blizzard is that they can't, is that they're showing that they're more than willing to, on one hand, support one thing because it doesn't cost them anything. And on the other, so, so yeah, they are, uh, you know, they have a history of supporting pride, like pride elements and the LGBTQ plus community, which is great. It just sucks that they can't extend that same kind of support for, you know, basic human rights for folks. Um, but, you know, this is this is all going to come to a head at BlizzCon. It absolutely will be uh, coming to a head at BlizzCon. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, somebody link me a, a boycott or protest BlizzCon uh, GoFundMe. But I was funded by basically one person. Uh, so I don't really put a whole lot of weight on it. I don't really know what it's going to be doing. It's held by the quartering. So I have, I have mixed feelings about him anyways. Um, but the, <clears throat> we know that outside of that little community doing its thing, right? I say a little, because again, one guy funded the whole fucking thing. Uh, the, there will definitely be some kind of protests or something going on at BlizzCon. That's the, that's going to be the opportunity for people who want to say something to say something uh, and it's going to happen. People already have tickets. Think about it. People already have tickets to go, right? It's, and, and a lot of people are, are, are disenfranchised by the actions that Blizzard's been taking over the past couple of weeks, but they're still going to go because they're not going to, they can't cancel a ticket because maybe they can't, maybe because they just flat out can't cancel, they're just straight up losing the money, right? So they're going to go, but they might go and actually protest while they're there in some form or fashion. It could be a Winnie the Pooh shirt, right? It could be uh, just simply wearing a supporting Hong Kong shirt. Uh, it could be somebody saying something on the microphone. It could be somebody, yes, just getting up on the Q&A mic and just saying something, right? Uh, there's so many opportunities, so many opportunities for, for people to do something or say something at BlizzCon itself. Um, hobbies and craft stores do well, everything, yeah. <laughs> Uh, the GFM met the GoFundMe met its goal from one person. Yeah, one person donated three thousand dollars. 
uh assuming they're all gonna hand hand yeah so so there have been there have been some like uh you know rumbling that maybe blizz blizzard might cancel blizzcon and I, before anybody jumps to that absolutely not gonna happen i'm sure that everybody i'm sure i'm sure my co-hosts here uh are, are in agreement with me that there's no way in fucking hell that'll happen um if it does happen i don't know i'll shave my head or something <laughs> <laughs> there is no fucking way that uh that blizzard is going to be canceling blizzcon uh the amount of community goodwill that they already that's already teetering for a lot of folks would just disappear in a, in a moment um it would just be gone like they they would lose the american market just like that sure some of people might still play the games but blizzcon is the heart of that community uh if without without blizzcon well, you might as well just, um, well, you might as well just, you know, fucking move to China. Just uproot the whole fucking company and move to China. Uh, they got too much Diablo Immortal gameplay to reveal. <laughs> I know. I bet there is. So, so yeah, so that's the other thing is the next step, the next step is, <laughs> Nero Wind, maybe. Uh, the next step is that, uh, uh, or the next, the next guess is that there will be no open mic QAs. So that's the thing, right? An open mic QA, uh, Leaves them extraordinarily vul vulnerable. Red shirt guy, other red shirt guy. Like, people are going to get up there and they're going to say something. Somebody will absolutely say something. And sure, sure, there's going to be a stream delay. Absolutely going to be a stream delay. Uh, but, like, that's the, that was the other red shirt guy, guys. He was wearing red shirt. <laughs> Damn. Fucking try to slide them jokes in there. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, yeah, it's like, if they don't have an open mic Q&A, um, well, well, we know that, uh, why they're doing it, because they've always had an open mic Q&A in the past. So, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's going to be a, uh, uh, it's going to be a shit show one way or another. I can't imagine that this BlizzCon goes accident free. There's no way. I just can't see it happening. And if it, and if honestly, if it does, if it does end up like blowing over and like, oh, nothing happened and everybody loves the games coming out, then, then gamers are a bunch of bitches. Like, seriously. Um, <laughs> just a bunch of fucking bitches. <laughs> but Diablo 4! It's like, don't worry, dude. Like, it, <laughs> just, just play it next year or something, in a year. Uh, this place could be worse than last year's, which is hilarious. Yeah. Gamers are a bunch of bitches. <laughs> Last year's was pretty fucking bad. Last year's was, was pretty bad overall. Uh, how closely do you think China would be watching this year's BlizzCon? Oh, absolutely, dude. Totally. Totally. Oh, yeah. They're not going to not do it. And it's not going to be like, you know, at the, at, in, the, in the, the, head, the headquarters of, uh, of the CCP. It's not like they're going to be sitting there watching it together. Like, there's just going to be some intern or some, somebody that works there that's going to be tasked with, uh, with, you know, monitoring communications from, uh, from, from a company that they're working closely with. It's going to happen. Uh, it's absolutely going to happen. Got a phone. China's already watching everything. Uh, I wonder if they banned that. Is this a joke guy for buying tits this year? Oh, the, uh, the, yeah, the, uh, the, uh, out of season joke. Somebody mentioned, yeah, we don't know who the band, the closing band is. I'm actually very curious who it is. Not that it would really make a difference, but I mean, like, I'm curious who's who's going to be closing out BlizzCon. Um, and also, and also, I wonder if if whatever whatever band <laughs> Nickelback. Uh, are you wait, lack? Are you are you stating this as fact, or are you just throwing it out there? Oh, because no one else wants to. Yes. So that that was my point. Was that I do wonder with all of the scrutiny that Blizzard is under, if any. If, if any band really wants to go out of their way to play at BlizzCon, I can't imagine that BlizzCon for any single band is like a major boost in publicity or, you know, just, you know, awareness for that band's album or tour or whatever. Usually when the bands come and play, they're playing for us and like, and the, the VOD disappears. You never see that shit. Um, so it's never, it's, ne it's not really like this is, you know, th this was their breakout moment. It was on the BlizzCon stage. No, that doesn't happen for anybody. So, so there's really nothing to lose outside of whatever money Blizzard was going to be paying, whatever band is 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 uh, is slated to play. Um, Nephew's Garage Band. Yeah, exactly. 
Uh, will they remove people to ask political questions? Assuming there's open mic Q&A or just cut the stream for a minute and move on. So that's, yeah, so, I mean, that's what we're talking about, uh, Corpse, was that it's very possible they could just cut the, uh, you know, cut the stream or, or something, you know, cut the microphone or something. But, you know, we only have to wait two weeks. <laughs> Execute them on the spot. Just, just done. Uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. I, you know, it's funny. I found my, uh, I found my passport. I was looking for, uh, the title for the car because we're selling my car right now. The, not the truck, the car. Um, and, uh, I, and I found my passport and I was like, oh shit, I haven't seen this forever. Too bad I can't really use it. Like, <laughs> like I mean, I mean, granted, I, I, I'm sure that nobody's gonna be targeting me from like the Chinese government or anything, but like, you know, I do want to go to South Korea. <laughs> That's really fucking close to China and I've been talking a lot of shit lately. Uh, but yeah, technical difficulties with a live mic. That yeah, exactly. We'll, we'll have to, we'll have to wait and see. But, uh, I, I definitely, I definitely feel like it's not completely plausible that they uh, uh it's not it's it's not it's probably not going to be a uh, uh an open mic and that'll be the the absolute most i think that they would do because it's the only opportunity people really have to protest uh you know openly now in terms of like signs or something in the audience they just won't show the audience right so we'll have to just wait a couple weeks uh viewing party at my house i do have the the virtual ticket i do have the the virtual ticket uh, I'll definitely be watching, uh, I'll, I'll w I will be watching the StarCraft, uh, uh, tournament for sure. I feel like that's the one, that's the one thing that Blizzard hasn't fucked up because they completely ignore StarCraft entirely. <laughs> like, they just completely, because, you know why? It's because, because the, the, the Korean market pretty much owns StarCraft. So that's probably why, uh, uh, why Blizzard doesn't really do anything with StarCraft. Because, you know, it works, and the last thing we want to do is piss off yet another country. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, they only make money on the live stream because people are going to watch to see what happens. Totally. Might go to, uh, so when his hotel gets a knock. Yep, the chairman said his regards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the VR ticket isn't worth 60 bucks. Why well, is the crowd is too rowdy for BlizzCon to happen? Well, we'll see. Uh, by part of the group of US Lobbyings on Friday, Coast Night. Yeah, yeah, we just talked about that. Um, I don't play StarCraft, but I watch all this tournament. Yeah, I, I don't play, I don't, I don't play either. And I haven't, I honestly haven't watched any StarCraft since all this stuff happening because it kind of felt dirty, right? But I know that, you know, in a couple of weeks, I'll probably watch, uh, I mean, we'll see how I feel. Like, you know, it's, I'm not trying to, like, just uphold a ban or a protest simply because it's the cool thing to do. Like, I legit feel dirty, like, you know, giving Blizzard money, uh, which is why I canceled my WoW subscription. I legit feel dirty having the launcher on my computer, right? It was like with Epic. I did the same thing to Epic. I felt dirty having Epic on my fucking, on my, uh, uh, on my PC because I felt hypocritical, right? Like I, I don't support them buying their way into the market the way they are. Um, and so I uninstalled it. And it's anything with Battle.net launcher. Pretty soon I have no fucking launchers left. <laughs> I'm just gonna fucking there's nothing left. What am I gonna play? I'm not gonna play any games. I'm just gonna switch I'm just gonna switch industries, play something else. Every every video game company is sold out. <sighs> oh man. I got to free up hundred gigabytes off of SSD. Sue, see, right? It's fucking awesome. So, uh, the only logic you'll have is a desktop logic. Turn off your computer. There you go. Board games. Pray Steam doesn't sell up to China. Dude, I know. I know. I'd be really upset if that happens. So, now on to good news. Yes, now on to good news. Good news, everybody. This is, there's a chain of things here. Uh, so, good news. Fortnite US July revenue is down 52% year over year. Fortnite is dying. But then, but then, they had the wildest, this was supposed to be last week's news, but I cut it out because we were focusing almost entirely on, uh, on, uh, on, on the China issue with, with uh, the censorship issue with Blizzard. But then they go and they do this crazy shit, and if you haven't seen it, if you haven't seen it, it is absolutely fascinating the way they ended this, this, uh, uh, this season. So... In game, if you were in game when this event took place, you basically got to see, and I'm gonna fast forward this a little bit here. You got to see just a gigantic fucking meteor. Every YouTuber had the same reaction to the video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to see this gigantic meteor come down, strike, uh, you know, just rockets and shit flying all over the place. Like, there's shit all over the place. And this is all like in the game. Like, you, this, these are guys, I guess, right in the middle of a match or something. Um, and the next thing you know, there's this, uh, here we go back a little bit here. 
I, yeah, so, so sorry. Uh, that was the first thing I thought was that Final Fantasy XIV did it first. <laughs> so it comes down, there's a huge explosion. You get knocked back out in the air here. I mean, like, all the way back, all the way back. And then, and then eventually everything gets sucked in and you'll see where it goes from here. But this was their end of season uh, uh, event, which played out a lot like, like an end of beta event. You know, and it's funny because we always, people always talk about like end of beta events because they're so fucking cool. It's like, this is some crazy thing that these guys did at the end of, you know, whatever beta. Um, and this is like one of the first times outside of Final Fantasy XIV, this is one of the first times uh, on a game this big where we've seen um, them, you know, do what would typically be an end of beta event. Uh, Fortnite out of early, Fortnite's finally out of early access. They have a brand new map that they announced. Um, oh, I guess, oh, I guess it's not gonna show the black hole. Really? Really, this fucking video? No black hole? All of that, but no fucking black hole? So anyways, it's a black hole. <laughs> and if you try, and this, they took the servers down, like, they did everything, uh, that made it seem like the game was going away. And there was, uh, there was a video, and I don't have it right now, but there's a video of some kid, like, getting super mad, uh, at, you know, the, bl the black hole screen because he can't play Fortnite. And he, like, punches the screen, and it was just like, what the fuck? Like, kids everywhere are just fucking mad. So, yeah, so Fortnite revenue was down, you know, 52%. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, all this happens. Uh, you think that video is fake? You think so? It looked pretty fucking real to me, man. That'd be, like, a really good fake. Uh, I, I guess I didn't scrutinize it hard enough, but it sure as fuck, look, I mean, look at this is fucking amazing. Um... Fortnite is the only game that could literally do this and survive. Dude, they gained so much from this. They gained eight was 8.4 million people uh, watching this shit. It was the most popular thing ever streamed on Twitch. Uh, right? I think, yeah, it was like the most popular thing ever streamed on Twitch. Uh, there was, what they say, like 32 people on Mixer watched it. <laughs> uh, people who were... Why, if you go to, if you went to the Fortnite section of Twitch while this was happening and it was just a black hole for like 24 hours, people were streaming that and they had like hundreds of viewers. It was fucking wild. Like everybody was watching this. Uh, sorry, not hundreds, thousands. Let's just say hundreds, like thousands of viewers watching somebody watch the black hole screen. Um, so far game companies are two for two for dropping meteors on their game and re-releasing to success. Thank you. That is the best way to put this. Uh, it's, I mean, hats off, man. Like, that's a pretty fucking cool event. A pretty fucking cool event. Uh, and with the new season, there's also some new marketing strategies that are happening. I don't know if you guys, uh, if you guys follow Lady Gaga, uh, but Lady Gaga asked recently, what is Fortnite? And then she asked, uh, at Ninja, who are you? <laughs> and uh it's not here for some reason but uh it is there. He says, so ninja resp responded and he said ask drake uh, <laughs> we don't know what this is about like why lady gaga is asking who ninja is and what fortnite is it's possible she could legit just not know what these things are and is kind of just being vocal about it because she knows these guys are popular right she knows it's like, i mean like ninja's got how many followers uh 5.2 million followers i know lady gaga has more than this uh where does it say uh, 79.8 million followers, yeah, like, but still, 5.9 million is nothing to shake a stick at, uh, it's a fucking huge market, uh, and it's, you know, it sucks because I don't I actually don't see the, the rest of it here, but, um, but Ninja doesn't play with females, <laughs> so, <laughs> to follow up on that, <clears throat> a certain streamer by the name of Casey Tron, uh, was very vocal about, about uh, about Ninja saying that I am being attacked by Ninja fanboys for stating the truth. What was the truth? Let's go take a look at what that truth was, Casey. Uh, Lady Gaga says, Ninja, who are you? Says he's one of the most popular streamers on the internet and he doesn't support women as he publicly announced he will never do a stream with any woman, I guess, unless it benefits him. And then she says, stop adding me Ninja fans. Should you all, you sh you should, should you all be in high school, in school right now? Get off your phones and learn something and leave me alone. I can't have a bunch of kids tweeting at me right now. And then she, then she promotes her fucking, uh, her link. By the way, I never thought about this, but I feel like, but I, but I really, really, really would like to like partially change my 
change my uh my Twitter uh uh, uh preferences to spanish because i want to see nine retweets and 391 me gusta i fucking love that <laughs> i really fucking love that uh so so casey tron obviously uh very bitter about something that's completely false um and and ninja replies and says i have literally played squads i've literally played squads with multiple women after that article over the last year and a half as well as hosted many female streamers i will continue to support everyone in gaming while you get baked on stream Ooh, ooh, man! And she, she's oh no, I spoke. She tried to recover, but oh man. Uh, so wait, is, <laughs> we say that's that's Casey Tron's mo, complete bull, complete bait. So, so maybe we should talk about what the limits are of of your persona. We know that uh, <clears throat> we know that we have plenty of people who are just a persona, right? Casey Tron's persona, um. Dr. Disrespect is a persona. Uh, uh, <laughs> there's just a number of different uh, characters that people play, you know, online. And there's a line that once you cross it, it's no longer you playing a part. It's you actually trying to use your, per your, your, your persona that you've developed uh, for personal gain. And that is precisely what Casey Tron is doing when she steps over into fucking normie land and she protests ninja on lady gaga's twitter feed it's one thing if she's responding to a ninja thread or something right or somebody within the games industry but once she steps out and she goes out into fucking normieville and she starts promoting this bullshit like suddenly she's crossing the line so this is uh uh so in my opinion the Casey Tron that we all feel like is just a, you know, it's just a gag. It's just, oh, it's just, just fucking bait. You guys all fell for the bait. I have a feeling that it's not entirely true. It's she's using it as a crutch to, uh, uh, to be able to, to basically be able to push these views. Uh, and then later be like, hi, hi, I got you guys. What's that fucking comic where like somebody was like, hey, look at me. Oh, yeah, some, some guy would say, yes, there's like two stick or three stick figures and two of them are talking together. And one guy comes over and he's all like, hey, look at me. I'm retarded or something. And the guy's, the guy's like, wow, that guy's retarded. And they leave. And then he goes, haha, jokes on them. I was just kidding. That's pretty much her. <laughs> That's pretty much her right now. Uh, but he said it. Yeah, it, uh, literally what the comic says. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, so. So yeah, I definitely feel like Casey Tron as a character has, uh, has over, 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 uh, overreached, overreached and, uh, by stepping into the, uh, into the regular person, uh, world of Twitter and, uh, and yeah, so, so, you know, I, I was one of those folks who, uh, you know, a couple, you know, what, a couple weeks ago, Casey Tron came up and I was just kind of like, yeah, yeah, she's the queen of Twitch because she fucking baits people all the time, but this is definitely stepping a little bit too far, trying to like throw Ninja under the bus for some bullshit. But I'm really glad that Ninja actually bit back and fucking, I will continue to support everyone in gaming while you get, get baked on stream. Oof. Ugh, man. And she's roughly the last woman in a position to be trying to stand up for women. Well, that's, that stuff aside, um, these actions are definitely, uh, just not good. Um, the new Ninja without Twitch is very interesting. It's true. It's true, right? Like, Ninja without Twitch has definitely... I, I mean, there, there have been talks that... That, uh, I mean, from Ninja's wife. I don't know his wife's name. Apologies. Uh, but saying that Twitch was actually holding back the Ninja brand. And so now that he's out of their... You know, basically out of their reach over on, uh, you know, on Mixer, he's able to expand the brand and just continue to, uh, to build on it. And good for him, Mrs. Ninja. Obviously, I know that's where I fucked up. Uh, but yeah, good for him. Absolutely good for him. So uh, yeah, get fucking paid. He was on fucking. Uh, uh, he was on uh, the the Mass Singer. Uh, he's you know he's in the middle of all these discussions with fucking Lady Gaga and 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 this is this one's even weirder. Okay, and Guy Fieri. Like, come on, dude. What the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> he looks like the heavy man <laughs> like this is ridiculous what so we know that this is part of a promotion 
We know this is part of a promotion. We don't know what the Lady Gaga stuff is, but we know that this is part of a promotion for a skin. Uh, but this is like pretty much all that was said. This is all that was said. Uh, it was just, I mean, if you look at his feet, I was like, I was like, oh shit, what's he done? Right? Um, and if you look, it's like, that was the only thing that he said related to, re related to, uh, Fortnite. It was just kind of out of nowhere. So there it is. So basically he's just like, just tweet about random shit, random shit, random shit, random shit. And then all of a sudden, uh, where are we dropping ninja? And that was it. And obviously it's promotional, right? But there was no follow-up or anything. At least Lady Gaga, I don't know if you saw, but Lady Gaga was actually in her, uh, in her feed, like, replying to comments and everything and talking to people, you know, about this. Um, uh, let me see if I can find one. Da, 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 da. Anyways. Uh, oh, there's Casey Tron down there. Ha, <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, uh, Sully Tron everywhere are interested in cooking. <laughs> Heavy eating sandwich sound. Uh, dudes on family food, really? I uh, did the guy have uh, have uh, kids right in the Fortnite range. Oh yeah, you know that's that's true. I mean, I'm not I'm not putting it past uh past Guy Fieri to like. And by the way, I have to say it that way now because because Sean Evans said I have to say it that way. Uh, <laughs> but um, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he does have kids or something that also play the game. And for him, it might be a total fucking cool dad thing to do to like be a part of this community, even if it's just a tweet. He probably has no idea how to even fucking play games, right? Like, he probably has no idea, but, you know, his kid's probably just like, that's fucking cool, dad. But now I have to, now I have to watch a bunch of people run around in Flavortown skins <laughs> in Fortnite. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, do you think his kids will use his skin? Probably, at, maybe at first, but I don't think it would last. I feel like they would just be like, all right, dad, that's enough. They're probably over his Flavor Town bullshit too. <laughs> they probably are. Uh, where's the Flavor Flame skin? I know. I would love to see some. Uh, I mean, Flavor Flame is such a character. Please, please. That clock? It's a weapon. Alrighty. Uh, you make you want to go after uh, go after them more in game. Yeah, seriously. Uh, so, so. We're, we're still rolling in some good news, I think. We still got some good news here. Let me see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Next up, I, it, this one just really came out of nowhere. Uh, da, 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 closing my windows here. I don't even know where to start with this. No, not Soldier News. Uh, <laughs> no, not Randy. Randy was exonerated, by the way, on the uh, with the uh, uh, the case that he had from his ex lawyer um, or his attorney friend or something like that. He was exonerated in that in that whole thing. So. It turns out Randy is uh, actually coming out on top. Good thing that Borderlands 3 was good. Uh, so. So, 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 so. What I missed? Good. 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 Oh, yeah. Well, that, I guess that is good news. Okay, so. Uh, next up, Riot. Riot Games, a name that actually now uh, has meaning. Uh, Riot Games announced so much shit. They went from not having basically anything except for a league, and then obviously team fight tactics, team fight tactics recently, um, to uh, basically having everything. Uh, look at me, I'm Blizzard now. Exactly, all own. Yes, yes, I, it's going to be mentioned several times. Uh, Tencent does own not just a controlling share in Riot; they own a hundred percent of Riot. Uh, so take that however you will. Um, we know what 5% can do to a company, uh, who knows what 100% can do, but, but as far as I know, uh, in, in, in regards to censorship and, uh, human rights, Riot has not, uh, has not, I guess, had any infractions in that realm. Sure, they've had a lot of other issues, absolutely, but, um... But otherwise, uh, they have not necessarily... Now, they haven't come out. They're not going to come out and support Hong Kong. That's fucking not going to happen, right? Because they are 100% owned by, uh, uh, by, by, by Tencent. But, at the very least, they're not punishing people for saying that they support folks for whatever reason. At least not yet. Yeah, it's just, it's just the sexual harassment stuff. It's just that stuff. <laughs> which, is, which they apologize for in an indirect manner on their live stream that they did. Uh, and then, it was right in the middle of them basically putting out just fuck ton of uh of of just announcements i said they changed some splash arts but not much in the game sphere 
I uh, wait, what are you talking about? Are you talking about uh well, we'll move on because I have a lot of shit to talk about here because there's a lot of shit that they talked that they were they they uh they uh, announced. So first off, Team Fight Tactics is coming to mobile. This is an absolute unsurprising thing. We know. We 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 knew when it was released this game would work well on mobile. And guess what? They're going to bring it to mobile. Great. Next up, they have Legends, uh, League of Legends Wild Rift, which is basically a lighter weight version of League. I'll go and replace this window here because it's got all the moving shit there. Um, it's essentially a lighter weight version of League that's going to be playable on uh, on mobile and on uh, on consoles. Uh, and it basically looks like League. It has, I mean, it looks and plays like League. Uh, it's got 40 champions to start. Uh, it's got 40 champions to start, so a good selection of champions to get going. There's like a hundred something, maybe even 200, uh, 200 uh, uh, champions. Uh, there is a lot of push. You can see like mobile controls, obviously. Um, this is not the first time that we've had a MOBA on uh, on mobile. Matter of fact, League will probably be the last ones to have a MOBA on mobile. Uh, just like Blizzard is the last ones to have a Diablo clone on mobile. Uh, but they did say console as well. And so I'm actually genuinely curious how that ends up playing out. Like, on, because I mean, if, I mean, if it plays on like Switch, that, that'd be fucking great to be able to play. Latency definitely will be. I mean, yeah, <laughs> it may, it may or it may not, <laughs> you know, you, you, it's, it, I haven't played, I haven't played too many mobile, uh, uh, precision or timing, you know, games that basically would benefit, uh, or not benefits from, uh, you know, latency issues. Uh, but yeah, it's, I mean, they have a lot of shit. They have a lot of shit. There's more. There's more. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Uh, let's see. Next up, they have a game called Rune Terra, and Rune Terra is a strategy card game where, uh, let me see if I get some actual gameplay footage here. Here we go. Strategy card game. I don't know if I need to show you too much of this. It's, it's based off the League of Legends universe. Uh, just in general, I think everything that they have announced, with the exception of maybe the shooter, and we're going to go through all these, has has pretty much been based off of the League of Legends, uh, uh, uh in the League of Legends, League of Legends universe. Uh, was that a Raw Wildhead Rockets? <laughs> it is very much like, uh, you know, Magic, uh, Magic Gathering Arena, uh, uh, Hearthstone, uh, I mean, various other strategy card games. There's a ton. Uh, or there's, yeah, there's a, there's a ton of games, and it's, it's, it's gonna fall right in line with that. I, did they say this was going to be coming out on mobile? I actually don't know if they said it's going to be coming on mobile. This is definitely not a mobile uh, uh, demonstration here. You can see the, the little icon of the corner is a little bit too small for it to be on mobile. But uh, uh, oh, it's Jinx Rocket. That's right. That's right. And then, and then, this was called, yes, that was Legends of uh, Runeterra. Uh, then they had an actual, they have announced for an actual animated series, which is pretty fucking insane. Uh, and it actually looks, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, now I don't watch a whole lot of animated films, but to me, this looks pretty fucking good. And I'm sure it's going to, I mean, I'm going to watch it because uh, I'm genuinely curious how Riot is going to pull this off. Let me tell you, uh, I've worked with folks who work direct, who work at Riot um, off and on for the past like 10 years, right? I've been to Riot Studios. Uh, I know people who right now work at Riot. I know the guy who put the fucking video together. The, you know, the huge announcement video where they were kind of chained together all this stuff. Like, this is part of it, right? I know the guy who actually oversaw this whole thing. Um, this is not, this is not the first time that, that Riot has had a game uh, that, well, I mean, actually, that no, none of them came to fruition. But they've, they've had games internally that have pretty much fallen apart and just never went anywhere. Uh, no, it's not Mike S. <laughs> Mike S works for Blizzard. And, but, you know, it's funny, actually. He actually, he, he does the, uh, uh, he does video work for Blizzard. So there you go. Um, you draw some names. Uh, yeah, but Mike Chavis is uh, Blizzard. Um, anyways, yeah, so they have, a, they have a fucking series coming. There's more. They have a competitive shooter, uh, which I'll show you a video of this right now, actually. They, uh, they have a competitive shooter that looks... Uh, I mean, a lot of people point out the immediate, the immediate thing is that it looks like, uh, it looks like Overwatch and yeah, it looks a whole lot like Overwatch, uh, but their target demo in terms of gameplay is mostly going to be geared towards, uh, CSGO. So yeah, CS watch is the best way to really describe it. Uh, it is a competitive shooter. Uh, you do have, uh, permadeath in the match, right? So like CSGO, like once you die, then you have to wait for the next round to, to, to happen. Uh, I, I am 
I am genuinely curious if how this is going to play, how this is going to play out uh, competitively when you watch like tournaments and whatnot. Because uh, as it stands right now, watching Overwatch is really fucking hard because there's all of these like. Um, there's all these abilities and everything for all the characters, and it gets real muddled, and there's effects everywhere and all that. Watching CSGO is, is fucking easy, right? Like, it, there's no crazy, like, you know, spells or anything. The action is, is quick, but once the person is dead, that's it, right? They're out until the next match. Um, and so, this is gonna be a mix. Yeah, this is gonna be a mix of the two. I wonder how much this is going to, uh, uh, what this is gonna look, uh, look like. They, in their announcement, they talk about latency how they're battling and smoothing out latency like you just saw they're also talking about uh cheaters like how they're gonna how they're gonna you know combat people cheating uh which is different from what you yeah, match terminated which is different from what uh most game announcements they don't they don't focus on these things and it's funny because these are the things that that players really care about you know they care about how do you handle cheaters they care about latency uh, and so they're coming out in their opening, you know, introduction to this game. That's one of the things they talk about. They're not going to talk about, you know, the different gameplay modes and all that stuff. They're going to talk about how they're going to make the game fun to play as a baseline. Um, uh, Riot has done lots of work towards, uh, towards the net end of, of gaming with internet companies. Uh, the FTC has been trying to get developers to care about netcode forever. Yeah, it's... I mean, it's an approach that we that you know a lot of, a lot of game developers they don't go go through because they're more focused on the actual gameplay itself, like what makes what makes their game in terms of gameplay stand apart, and what what are they going to tell us that we don't already know? We already know that it's it's a mix between CS:GO and Overwatch. Are you going to tell us how they're mixed? No one cares. We get it. We watched the video. It took two seconds to really to to make that assumption. Focusing on how do you deal with te cheaters and how you deal with whatever, like that's that's a big deal, um, to us. Uh, there's also whoop. Uh, they also announced a fucking fighting game. Oh my god, there's so many things. They also announced a fighting game. Uh, I won't even really get into this. Is this Project L? The other one was Project A. Yeah, Project A was a shooter. Project L is the uh, is the fighting game. Uh, then there's Project F, which nobody really. And actually, I think I have it saved right here to see. Boop, there it is. Uh, <laughs> I had it time stamped here. Um, this is Project F, A L F, fuck Alf. Uh, they. This is uh, looking at this this tiny little clip, right? It basically goes away, right? Da, 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 and then boom, it's basically gone. Uh, this is this is looking a lot like a Diablo esque type of game, but we don't know anything about it. This is Project F. They actually did not announce this. They actually did not uh, announce this. It looks like Torchlight. It just needs yeah, at least heavier uh, uh, strokes on the uh, cell shading, <laughs> and then it'll totally be Torchlight. Uh, but anyways, yeah. So Riot came out and. You know, in basically stood on Blizzard's ashes and announced and decried themselves as, as the new Blizzard in terms of like games and having the presence uh, uh, and the the catalog that that Blizzard has and they've you know Blizzard's developed their catalog over the course of like twenty five years uh, and your know, Riot's been out for ten years but hasn't really released anything and so now they're announcing all this stuff a lot of this stuff your Project A L and F are all uh, you know to to be you know uh, determined. Uh, no, no league MMO. Well, we don't know what that Diablo esque one is. It could very well be an MMO. It could totally be an MMO. Uh, <laughs> you own Project F for ten plus years already. You wants to buy it? That's hilarious. I, I used to hold on to uh, to, uh, to to URLs for like a long time too, and then they never sold, so I got rid of it. Uh, so yeah, like this is a lot of shit that Riot's putting out. And in the midst of all this, and I don't have it timestamped or anything, but they even dropped a uh, a Blizzard, um, a jab at Blizzard. What they say? They said, uh, it turns out you guys do have phones. And it was so cringe. It was so, I didn't go out of my way to look for it because it was so cringe. I couldn't do it. Uh, but yeah, they, they decided to kind of throw a little jab at, uh, at Blizzard. So this is, this is a lot for... Yeah, again, it's real. It's funny because it, as much as I want this to be about Riot Games, this is a lot for Blizzard to field going into their biggest celebration of the Blizzard community in two weeks' time. Um, it's a lot, man. There's a lot of shit. <clears throat> phones, y'all have phone. Yep, we all have funds. We all have funds. <laughs> so yeah, the timing, the timing is. I know the timing is just. 
Oh man, there's somebody, somebody at Blizzard is having panic attacks like 24-7 over this whole thing. Probably Jalen Breck. Um, so, that's it for the news. I have some other stuff though. Uh, it's not necessarily news news, but it's, uh, uh, it's actually Jesse Cox. You guys know Jesse Cox, right? So Jesse Cox actually touched on a subject that, uh, that, I mean, it's not like controversial or anything. This is just, you know, what it's like to be a content creator. Uh, so Jesse Cox is talking about, uh, so he released a bunch of videos at once, right? Uh, it was supposed to be, it was a Let's Play. It was like five episodes, something like that, that he got five videos uh, that he released all at once. And he knows that it's just going to like not, it's not going to garner any views because of the way that the YouTube algorithm work, works. And now he's following up, following up today with more. He says, you want to know how YouTube works? We released five videos yesterday at the same time. Normally, SGS videos do anywhere between 80,000 to 100,000. Uh, plus, yesterday the average was 12,000 views. YouTube didn't send them to anyone. Another example of YouTube controlling content flow and creators. I also lost about 1,000 subscribers and now the algorithm will see me post videos and screw me over in new fascinating ways. This video I'm about to set live, get ready for it to be destroyed. I'd cry, but this is how I make a living, so I just suck it up. So let me reiterate, Let's Plays on YouTube are forced to upload on specific in specific chunks of time between episodes in order to have them sent to an audience, sometimes taking a week or more to complete. Meanwhile, Twitch can have an entire game beat in a day online to view. This is, this is, this is like a real challenge for content creators. Uh, he's right. Like, in one single day, in a four-hour stream, I could play through such a huge chunk of, uh, of, of, of a game. And then what do I do with it? People have said, yeah, you should upload them as Let's Plays to your YouTube channel. And part of me is like, okay, I could probably do that. But I already did do that in the past. And it just doesn't work. Um, well, it doesn't feel like it worked. I mean, so the, uh, the Don't Starve Adventures videos that I've done. I used to upload those every day. But what was happening was I noticed that like, Fewer and fewer people were watching them, and it was like staggering the difference between people that would watch those and versus watch everything else. And I had a hard time really like rationalizing whether or not it was because I was uploading too often or uh, whether or not people didn't want to see the content. And then I throw up a video for uh, for Cube World, and actually let's go see and see YouTube. Uh, let me pull this up here, Cube World, aka Mike B. Uh, let me see. Cube World. It's a fucking wood. What the fuck? Really? All right. So here it is. It's at uh, 88,640 views. There are more views on this one fucking video than I think I've gotten all year on YouTube. Uh, and definitely more views on this than probably an entire season's worth of, uh, of Don't Starve uh, Don't Starve Adventure episodes. So uploading stuff. And, you know, in, in bulk to YouTube to allow people to have like the kind of the luxury that you already afforded on Netflix, where it's like, boom, here's the whole season. Watch it at your own, uh, you know, on, at your own pace. Uh, they penalize you for it. Unfortunately, you used to watch all the let's uh, the, the let's starve stuff. I like that. Let's starve. Uh, yeah, it's but it, but it's the way. Yeah, the way the recommendation uh, engine works. It just basically shits on you. Um I'm going to be real honest here. I, I really do miss the Don't Starve Adventures. I mean, yeah, I watch everything you upload to YouTube, even the nudes, but uh, that's because I personally enjoy your content. Even if it's something I've seen live, it's like a rerun. Yes. So it's not so much about people watching it. It's like whether or not they are served the episode, right? Because when I mentioned Don't Starve Adventures, everybody says, I fucking love those videos, right? Like people, people will say, like, I really love those videos. Well, then why the fuck isn't YouTube sending them to people? It's probably because I upload too often. And so you guys end up missing a bunch or you have to go out of your way to find it. And if there are people that are not served the videos who maybe just kind of watch them casually, well, they might get served something else and they'll start watching something else instead, right? But those of you guys who really love the series, you'll go out of your way to watch it. And that's the problem that Jesse Cox is, is, uh, is outlining here is that he, he's trying to get these episodes out so that way people can watch them at their own convenience, but he's being penalized for it. Uh, and it sucks. It's, it's just, it's just the, the way it works. And again, like I upload one video on cube world, which, which I didn't even get that cube world video out in a timely manner. Like, I think I was like days after the actual release, which was already a week after the, uh, the alpha or the beta release. So it was already like two weeks late. Uh, so it was, it was not even like, 
good, like well timed. <laughs> it was, it was, but it still was a fucking smash. Uh, and it's just, I don't know. I can't figure out what YouTube wants, but it's, but I, you know, I'm glad that I'm not the only person dealing with these issues, but just, you know, I feel like people should know that your favorite content creator is probably not uploading the kind of content that you want to watch because they're pretty convinced that you won't actually get it. And that's the problem. <gasps> Before we go to other news, I'll read some of your comments. Uh, they care how long you watch. Uh, yeah, they do. They do. We, we know how long you guys watch for as well. Uh, I have, I have rewatched Micah Shizzle and Lore playing Q World a lot of times. Oh, good. Good. By the way, there's a new Q World mod that actually makes it pretty fucking good. You should check it out, Red. I know you already play and you already enjoy the game, but this one might actually make it a little bit more enjoyable. Just pointing it out. Uh, you watch the worm videos a lot? Yeah. I do miss making those videos with the, uh, uh, you know, with, uh, with Josh and, um, Josh and Shizzle and, and everybody else that we squeezed in. Uh, but yeah, it was, it, it was a lot of fun. I really did enjoy making that kind of content, but you know, time schedules, the types of content that we make now, it's hard to get everybody together for anything, uh, to, to play anything that we can turn into content like that. You know, I like the banter with Lauren Shizzle. Me too. Me too. I actually just hung out with, uh, with Josh just this past week. Was it past weekend? I think it was this past weekend. Yeah. Uh, I was actually hanging out with Josh and, uh, and Olivia. Say hello, Josh and Olivia. And, uh, and it was, uh, fucking blast. We got to go, go and see a fucking band that was amazing. Uh, yeah, Josh, Josh Allen, aka Lore, and Olivia D. Grace. Josh was up here for his birthday, uh, him and his girlfriend. And, um, and they were hanging out with, uh, uh with Olivia. And I went up there to the city and we went and watched bands. It was fucking great. Never heard of them. <laughs> By the way, at never heard of it is a fucking fantastic Twitter channel, or Twitter uh, feed. You should go watch it. Uh, let's see. I should really wrap this up, but I have a couple things here that I want to point out. This is, this is just like random shit that I just think is kind of cool, right? And some people may have missed. So, in cool tech news, cool yet overpriced tech news, have you guys seen this? I know that, I know someone's going to be like, the, the emulator. So, Feel free to get out of your system. Go on. Go on. All right. So, <laughs> delay is not really helping me here. There it is. There it is. Shut up, Monster Cloud. Uh, so, the, uh, uh, this is a redesigned Game Boy that actually plays Game Boy cartridges. Uh, and I believe also uh, Game Boy Advance cartridges. So it's not so much an emulator as it is an actual Game Boy that has been basically redesigned uh, and will eventually, it's not going to, with the release of this, it's not going to uh, actually come with, the, come with it, it's sold separately. Uh, eventually, it's also going to have a, um, a dock that will allow you to play it on your TV. I don't know the details on that and how that's going to function specifically. But it does look like just a pretty cool piece of hardware to play your old Game Boy games. If you actually have a bunch of old Game Boy games like I do. Uh, the problem is it's $199 just, just for the, the Game Boy itself, not the dock. The dock is going to be sold separately. So it is a very expensive piece of hardware when, like Cliff says, a Game Boy Micro might actually, I mean, outside of docking, pretty much does what all, everything that this does. Like, there's not, there, how much more fidelity are you going to squeeze out of a fucking Game Boy cart? There's not a lot, right? Is it backlit? Yes. That's really all you need. Game Boy Micro is probably the most underrated piece of hardware ever created. It's about as big as like an NES controller and it plays uh, GBA and I think uh, classic Game Boy games, right? I think they're, they're interchangeable. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's that you could get those for probably pretty fucking cheap, probably less than $199. <laughs> so I'm certain of it. Uh, yeah, it is, what is this? Uh, would it get hot from upscaling to the TV? Oh, who knows? Who knows? I believe this device has also quite a few tools included for chiptune creators. So, so, Zelius, 
I am very familiar with what they're talking about there because I was one of the uh, I was one of the first buyers of a little cart called Nano Loop, and I think I might actually demonstrate it here. See, here it is. So Nano Loop. This is this is back in I'm not even shitting you 2001. Okay, or 2000, 2001. Uh, people just started getting into like, oh shit, I could actually just like make music on my Game Boy. Uh, and they were using this piece of software called Nano Loop. And Nano Loop, I think they eventually had like an app that you could play, you use on your PC. But I actually bought the actual cartridge and you could throw this thing into your Game Boy and then you could go through and you could program it. And basically it's a tracker, right? And it'll use the game's onboard uh, a tone generator to make the same sounds that you would hear in an actual, you know, game music soundtrack. You can make that uh, yourself, and you'll hear. Is it like Mario Paint? It's called a tracker. It's not quite like Mario Paint because Mario Paint will like have a bunch of like random sounds and also like game sounds. This is an actual like tone generator where you could go through and you could take like, okay, I have a square wave. How do I want to like modulate a square wave? And then you'd modulate that square wave a hundred different ways, and then you would use that as like your lead for a song or something. Um, but where Mario Paint, you would say, "Oh, I want this thing to make a quack sound, and I want it to like quack 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 quack," right? Like you wanted to, you wanted to modulate the tone of it. But those are uh, what's called PCM sounds, right? Which is basically just like audio that's being pitched up and down. So there's a big difference between like PCM waveform rep uh, 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 generators and uh, tone generators. Uh, like with raw waveforms and whatnot. So, uh, so yeah, they 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 use it to promote Nano Loop. But here's the thing with Nano Loop: Nano Loop works best. Uh, it, Nano Loop is only made better by the hardware that it's being that's processing the actual you know data. Okay, so basically, if the Game Boy has a shitty sound chip uh, or a virtual sound chip, which everything from Game Boy Color up pretty much has a virtual sound chip, then you're going to get kind of a drier uh, type of tone. Like it's, gonna have, it's not quite, not really going to have quite a, uh, uh, a robust tone to it. But if you have an original Game Boy Classic and you slap Nano Loop in there, and I know I lost all you guys here, okay? But just bear with me. <laughs> if you take Nano Loop and slap it into a classic Game Boy that has an actual dedicated sound chip to it that's actually generating its own tones, um, you get a much warmer, better sound from it. So back when this thing came out, people were, people were, uh, you know, well, as a producer, I was part of the producer, the, the, you know, bedroom producer community. Um, people were, uh, uh saying they're basically gatekeeping. They were just like, oh yeah, well, well, it's, it sounds like shit on Game Boy Color. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Listen, all right. It's 200 bucks. Or you can get a Game Boy Micro. That's all you gotta know. <laughs> I can't. I can't help but just talk about music shit. All right. All right. All right. Last up. Last up. Last up. Remember that. Uh, remember that. That you guys remember the Wii Fit, and everyone thought it was silly, but yet everybody fucking owned one. I I own one. It's actually sitting right over there. Uh, still, I don't know why I still have it. Um. Wii Fit was a, an exercise attachment or peripheral used with the Wii. It was silly. They have a new one. Uh, and it's called the Ring. Or the Ring Fit. It looks equally as silly. <laughs> but apparently... It's actually pretty good because the games, the game that it comes with is pretty fucking good. Uh, when you played on the Wii Fit, you basically jump on it. It says, that's obese. And it sh fucking sh fat shames you. And then you have to do like stupid little like exercises where you're just kind of tapping your foot on the thing and whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, and there was nothing there. It was, it was shallow. It was just shallow. The Ring Fit adventure game is a full blown fucking RPG. So it is an actual game that has progression and the way it works is you attach your Joy-Con to it and it actually picks up the movements that you're making, where it's posi positioned, you have to like do squats and it's going to know what if you're squatting, right? Like it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, it's a pretty massive upgrade to the Wii Fit. 
And as somebody who was like making fun of this ring adventure thing when it came out, I kind of felt like I needed to backpedal on this a little bit and say, hey, you know what? This might actually be pretty good for those of us who have $80 in expendable money to buy a fucking ring uh, and uh, or in a game. It comes with a game, too. Uh, uh, and, you know, want to find an excuse to try to get into shape, which I'm one of those people. It's like every every three months or so, I'm just like, I need some kind of motivation to get in shape. Maybe that will be my thing. I have to stream. I have to stream it. <sighs> I have to buy it first. Uh, <laughs> I could stream it. Maybe, maybe it's it's gonna be embarrassing looking. It's gonna look silly, but you know what? I stream VR. At least with VR, though, I couldn't see you guys seeing me, so I've kind of felt like it wasn't that big of a deal. But with this, you guys are gonna see me, and I'm gonna see you, and I feel like that might look kind of weird. Yeah. Anyways, so. So that's it. That's the ring fit. Actually, it's av it's available now. Actually, I believe it came out today. Uh, it's good for getting. Yes, VR is super good for getting some movement. I, I actually play. Uh, I play um, a super hot every once in a while. Whenever I get the VR shit set up, I always fire up super hot first because it's so fucking good. VR super hot super hot VR is so good. It's just the best. There there's so many games out there that are like you know just great. Like you know play you know play whatever. Uh, and obviously porn is great. VR porn is fantastic. But uh, but super hot VR is just the fucking shit. And that's all I got to say about that. So, that's it. I kill my legs doing audio shields. Oh yeah, audio shields, another good one. And there's also Beat Saber. Yeah. I can see us. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. This is the news. My name is Mike B, aka Phony. This is chat thinking I'm blind. I can see you. I can see you red. Right there, Red. Thank you so much for watching. Very special follow-up episode to uh, <laughs> to last week's Blizzard, uh, Blizzard bullshit. But we had some good news in there too. We had some good news. There was a, what was the good news? I forget. But that's it. So thank you so much for watching. You guys have yourself a good whatever, and I will see you. <gasps>